You might have seen him planning the future art scene of Worcester. He has been on the Broadway stage or a plane flying over Haiti with Ben Stiller, strumming a guitar on a local Hopkinton stage, getting a cup of coffee in the center of town, or even having pizza on Main Street with his family. I'm talking about Jerry Shea, who lives here in Hopkinton, and we are in his living room to get to know him today at Meet Your Neighbor. Hi, Jerry. Thank you for having me in your home today. Oh, welcome. For Meet Your Neighbor, and uh, we're here in Hopkinton at your house, mm -hmm. and I, you're seated right beside your guitar. Right. Try and never to be too far away from it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, it's uh, beautiful here in your home. Thank and, you. And you have a lovely guitar also. And uh, I know some people in town might know you uh, by your guitar. Some know you yeah. perhaps by other identity. I wonder if you could tell a little bit about your connection to the guitar oh, and sure. music. Well, I, the guitar has been in my life since I was 12 years old. I, I grew up a huge Elvis Presley fan. Oh, uh -huh. And I, all, I was begging my parents for years, I think since I could walk, to, to learn how to play the guitar and be like Elvis. So mm -hmm. I've always had mm -hmm. a guitar. And this, this guitar in particular was a 40th birthday present from Elaine and the kids, oh, my wife uh -huh. and, and my kids. And uh, they surprised me with it. And uh, it just brought me so much more inspiration. Uh, it's a, a new sound. I used to play a classical, classical guitar, you know, with nylon strings, and, and uh, this one's just got such versatility to it, and I just want to learn how to play it better and better. So I, I really do try to keep it close all the time when I'm mm -hmm. home. You know, mm -hmm. you pick it up when I have a moment of inspiration. And it's my breakfast in the morning. I'd rather, if I'm pressed for time before mm -hmm. work, I would rather spend five minutes strumming my guitar mm -hmm. than grabbing breakfast, wow. and, and, I, uh -huh. and then I feel like, okay, I can start my day. Mm -hmm. you know? Has it been that way f since you were 12? I'd say there are there, there are periods where it waxed and waned for me mm -hmm. when my kids were younger. I, there was always a, my guitar, my first guitar that I played for 30 years, and, mm -hmm. and, and it was always in the corner of the living room, but I didn't always have a lot of time to pick it up in those days, and I made my living as an entertainer. and. I would tend to get my, my jiggles out on stage, and then I wouldn't necessarily come home and, and, and hunger for, for playing at the time. But so for a few years, it sort of, it sort of waned a little bit. I'd, I'd play it several times a week, but certainly not to the degree that I, I try to play now. Mm. So yeah. you would play some Elvis? I used to play a lot uh -huh. of Elvis stuff, yeah. yeah, uh -huh. yeah. And then uh, your own songs as well. And I did here and there. I, I wrote a few things in college, uh, mm -hmm. not of a, very good. Some of the things I've resurrected now and try mm -hmm. to piece together in another way mm -hmm. and rethink. But uh, I, I think I've become more of a, or certainly a better songwriter in the, in the past uh, you know, three, four years. And I've really focused time on it and, uh -huh. and learning technique and get to know other songwriters and study the craft of it. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. Oh, um, that's interesting. In the last few years of your life, you feel like you've gotten better, although you spent so much time uh, through since age 12. Yeah, what do you think yeah. makes a difference now for writing songs you're happy with and performing? Well, I, think, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact I, I value it more now. I think I, I, I worry less about what other people are going to say about mm. what it is that I do mm -hmm. uh, artistically, and, and I, I tend to put a little more stock in what I have to say instead of speaking someone else's other lines, because I, mm -hmm. I was an actor for a long time, and I'd, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd, I'd speak as scripted, but, but this mm -hmm. is my way of of scratching that artistic itch you know, mm -hmm. to perform. Mm -hmm. And uh, the less time I have to go out and do, say, theater, which I haven't done in, in many years, uh, mm -hmm. the more I feel I need to find something that fits within my life. So songwriting has been something that I feel like I can commit an afternoon to banging a song out, or at mm -hmm. least starting a song and letting it breathe and coming back to it a few nights later. Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 it's modularized and it sort of fits there. I can, have, I can create something, uh, it, it won't take me six months to finish it, like a, like a screenplay or something mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's something I can commit to doing, mm -hmm. and, and I think I do it fairly well, but uh, mm -hmm. getting better and better at it. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, um, that, that's great. Uh, and uh, at the end, we're hoping that we can hear a song of yours. Uh, oh, great! Also, yeah. Yeah, but to so. know a little bit more about you, you mentioned your past involvement with theater for mm -hmm. your work. I was wondering if you could tell a little bit about that, how you got connected in theater, what you did, uh, sure, where that you were. Well, I think part of the thing was it was interesting. I, I mentioned it was an Elvis fan. I used to watch Elvis movies too, mm -hmm. and I remember watching mm -hmm. Cary Grant and all these really you know cool people on TV and. 
Mr. Rogers, I always was fascinated with storytelling, and, mm -hmm. and I wanted to be, you know, like a lot of little kids, you think, I wanted to be in that box playing and doing what they did. Yeah. So that was, that was, uh, there was attraction there for me, and I, I think s songs are stories, and acting is storytelling, and mm -hmm. these are all something that plays into uh, that passion for me. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, I, I became an actor, uh, really, I, I'd say I've always been an actor, um, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I did it more formally as I went on and, and learned, to, learned to act uh, in a formal training program, but I did a little bit in high school mm -hmm. uh, when I had the courage to actually do it, you know, I took a lot of ribbing for that kind of thing mm -hmm. as a kid, but uh, in college I had, I was a, a biology major thinking I wanted to be a physician, and then I mm -hmm. figured, well, maybe I'll go into politics, and I was a poli-sci major, and it was a very mm -hmm. tumultuous few years at Boston College and I finally left uh, after a while and just kind of get my head on straight came back about a year and a half later uh, had gone out to LA and said well I think I'm gonna do this acting mm -hmm. thing and mm -hmm. had some good advice out there and they said I think if you're gonna do this you gotta learn how to do it mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> came back to BC and I got my theater arts degree mm -hmm. and uh, spent the, the last two years of my my college uh, career uh, in the theater I was a theater rat I would, mm -hmm. I'd be in there doing shows, doing uh, constructing of, of, of sets, and, and uh, doing lighting and sound, and just learning about the, the technical side of it, and, mm -hmm. and then I increasingly uh, became more passionate about it, and more confident in the fact that I was pretty good at it, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I applied for entry audition for NYU's uh, Tisch Graduate Acting mm -hmm. Program, mm -hmm. and got my master's in fine arts in acting of all mm -hmm. things. Wow! Learned to juggle and. Tightrope oh. walk and trapeze and <laughs> that clown. That was part work. of it. That's all part of it. You do you do all wow. the Shakespeare and all the classics and mm -hmm. Gorky plays and everything else. But you get to do a lot of fun things, mm -hmm. sword sword play and mm -hmm. and clowning. It's mm -hmm. it's and quite a process for three years. And of course, then yeah. from there. And then from there, I, I was really fortunate in that uh, the day I remember the day I graduated, I had to leave uh, a family dinner in New York. We were celebrating my graduation. I went to my first audition. Rosemary Titchler, who was the uh, casting director of the Public Theater, mm. and uh, she did uh, Joe Papp's uh, Shakespeare in the Park in Central Park in the Delacorte wow. Theater, and and she hired me the day I graduated wow. to do my first first production mm -hmm. uh, in the park, and and it was just great exposure for me. Um, it was. Uh, uh, a great experience to do Shakespeare there, and, and they had me bring my guitar along because she knew I could sing, oh, uh -huh. and they needed young people. I was a spear carrier, but but I, I got this great opportunity to do a featured role, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it just people had you know people saw that I could sing and act a little bit, and mm -hmm. I got my next gig, and sort of one thing follows another. I wound up doing uh, a. A, a revival of uh, of Guys and Dolls with uh, Nathan Lane and, and Faith mm -hmm. Prince and, mm -hmm. and Peter Gallagher. I was his understudy. Wow. And I played the drunk. It wow. was a, what they call an onstage cover. It's a, it's a, a chorus role, and I would play one of the gangsters, uh -huh. and then I got to come out in this funny costume and in boxer shorts and sock garters and an overcoat. <laughs> I looked like a flasher with a floppy hat and came out and get the laugh every night. And uh -huh. and, uh, and then when he would uh, go off and loop a film or finish up a production elsewhere in L.A., I'd, I'd step in for him and do a show. Mm -hmm. wow. I played Sky Masterson, which is a blast. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, how many years were you uh, involved in theater? Well, I, I left theater. I, I, I started doing a little bit of theater, as I said, in high school. and then, mm -hmm. uh, But professionally, I was there about 10 years. I, mm -hmm. I was in New York in the late 80s and uh, into probably uh, 98, I guess it was, that uh, Elaine and I uh, really made the decision to, to focus more on being together and raising our family together, it was mm -hmm. I was increasingly uh, traveling I was just to to, mm -hmm. to stay working. Uh, this it seemed like I was very blessed to, with the opportunity to work, and and there were there were plenty of opportunities to do that mm -hmm. uh, if you're willing to travel. Mm -hmm. And I'd be and out of theater. town in theater mm -hmm. specifically. Mm -hmm. and, well, actually for you know for film and TV as well, mm -hmm. there's yeah. quite a bit that happens in New York. But uh, to stay busy consistently, you got to be willing to yeah. spend time in other states, you know, L.A. and uh, there are opportunities to go to Canada to sign on for uh -huh. a year. Of, you know, you sign a life of your, or your a year of your kid's life away, essentially, mm -hmm. to to go off uh -huh. and do a, a show out of town to bring it into to New York again. Mm -hmm. So that was something that I, I it was just it weighed on me, and I I spent some time uh, about four months in in San San Diego when the kids uh, right before the kids came. My, I have twins that are mm -hmm. eighteen, uh -huh. um, and. Uh, you know, when they were born, things really started to change. I, I uh, w went to San Francisco for another four months, and without them, they were about two and a half years old. Mm -hmm. And that's a lifetime for them. You go away yeah. for a day, it's like, where have you been? You know, yeah. where have you been, Dad? I remember coming home 
after being away for months. And I had my guitar in my bag, and Elaine had let them stay up. The car dropped me off at the house, and I had the, the kids waiting at the door for me mm -hmm. at 10 o'clock at night. And they said, are you going to, and I was coming home to stay, and they said, are you going to stay over? Are you going to mm -hmm. sleep over? You know, mm -hmm. they thought I didn't live with them anymore. Mm -hmm. So after that experience, I just said, you know, enough is enough. Mm -hmm. and, um, it was just um, as much as I love the work uh, yeah. as an actor, I love the, the play, you know, I love mm -hmm. to do it. Uh, yeah. The the life is very hard on families, and, yeah. and uh, I wasn't I wasn't willing to sacrifice or make them sacrifice the time with their dad either. Mm -hmm. So it's been a good decision, and, yeah. and we made yeah. our way back here a couple of years in Natick. Uh, my wife is from Framingham, so this is sort of Metro West area is where her her folks are, our folks are now. Mm -hmm. uh, my family's still in Boston, and but mm -hmm. we've got in laws here, and and we've always gravitated toward Hopkinton. Mm. Um, my uh, my in-laws had raised their kids here, their boys here in town, and it was a great soccer program, great schools, and great mm -hmm. music program, and I, we just really seemed to fit, and we really really gravitated toward the area, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and we found it very easy to make friends through through the kids, which mm -hmm. I find the case everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. Kids are a great sort of equalizer. Well, that was uh, quite a move from Broadway, the stage of Broadway in New York City, and. California, and I know you were, uh, you had many offers, and you were nominated for a Tony. You I was were very yeah. accomplished yeah. at this life and this work, yet noticed that how it was not working with your new family as well, and and uh, to look at uh, where to settle next, and and end up right here in yeah. in Hopkinton in the yeah, Metro we're, West. We're very fortunate, and we're within earshot of, and within reach of our entire family now, with which is really nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that to me has been the, the prime goal. I, I knew, mm -hmm. you know, I, I've got some very wise people in my life. My my dad, my mm -hmm. mom, and and my mother-in-law. You know, and. and I see how they've lived their lives, and mm -hmm. they've been close to the, to our families, mm -hmm. and, and uh, I, I don't view it as a sacrifice in any way. I mm -hmm. found that yeah. this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to be around them. I, I can't see myself regretting mm -hmm. uh, anything but uh, not spending enough time with my family. Mm -hmm. uh, that is mm -hmm. the prime mover for me. Yes, yeah. All, yeah. all part of the path, and yeah. uh, important to recognize people in life who are wise and, and give advice. Yeah. In that I've way. gotten quite a few. Yeah. I'm lucky that way. Mm. And uh, so, and now in Hopkinton in Metro West, do you have a few places that you favor spending time? Uh, it must be a bit different than the life of New York City. Or? Well, it's nice that it's just the open space. And I grew up in, in Hyde Park, in, in, mm -hmm. in the city, yeah. essentially, and, and uh, spent years, the, my grad school years while I was in school, mm -hmm. I, I lived two out of three of those years. And, in, uh, in, in Greenwich Village. Uh, so mm -hmm. it was, you know, in sort of the honking, beeping city, yeah. 24 hours a day, mm -hmm. bustling. But uh, I, uh, I didn't want to drag Elaine all the way into the city, uh, although she's, she lived in the city and, and did fine in Brighton when she mm -hmm. was uh, nursing at uh, Brigham and Women's. But mm -hmm. uh, we knew that we wanted to have a little space for the kids. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to have a lawn, we wanted to have mm -hmm. uh, soccer mm -hmm. fields around for them and have mm -hmm. trees and grass and not to deal with some of the friction that, that uh, kids can experience. Mm -hmm. in the city so much and they they are curious about the city and they go off and they enjoy it now that they're older and they go in on their own they're independent and enjoy it in their own ways uh, but i think it's been really good to to uh, plant them here in hopkinton mm -hmm. i think mm -hmm. it's been a really healthy environment for them mm -hmm. and uh, you know you can trust the neighbors and, yeah. and it, it, it is that whole thing about taking a village we've relied mm -hmm. on the neighbors and, and know that we can count on them to tip us off if there's something you know we need to know about what's going on with mm -hmm. the kids in town and mm -hmm. Uh, it's just been a really good, a good community that mm -hmm. way. Yeah, well, and, um, we're glad you're here. And, oh, thanks. Uh, it's uh, very interesting to hear your path. And I know there's more after theater. You went into work while you settled in Hopkinton. Mm -hmm. You got involved yeah. in some other kind of career work as well. Can you talk a little about that? Sure. Well, you know, I, as, a, as an actor, I, uh, I realized very early on that it's a communication Mm -hmm. Field. Yeah. It's it's something that I realized could translate the skills as an actor, uh, could translate very easily into public relations and communications. And mm -hmm. uh, I found uh, an opportunity to work for the state um, and Paul Salucci's administration. Mm -hmm. I, I started out in the division of energy resources. It's a, a, a the energy office they call it, and, mm -hmm. and I was doing public relations work for them, consumer education, 
And after about a year of doing that, I was asked to come up and join Paul's team. Mm -hmm. uh, and I eventually became uh, deputy chief of staff for strategic planning for him. And that was really where sort of politics meets public service mm -hmm. and, 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 and policy. And you always oh, have to sort of stay on this side of the, 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 stay on the policy side as opposed to the politics side because I'm not paid to be a politician. Mm -hmm. I was paid mm -hmm. to uh, figure out what the uh, the options were, what the right thing to help, to help to sort of uh, coach coach my superiors along and what the right decisions mm -hmm. were, finding what the issues were, staying ahead of certain issues mm -hmm. in, in public service and making sure that uh, Paul knew the information he needed to know to make his his uh, decisions and mm -hmm. work his agenda. Wow, yeah. how interesting. Next uh shift in, in your career and it your was, work into uh, politics. It was then. fascinating. Yeah. And, um, a lot of people say, oh, well, you, so you're working at the sausage plant now. You see how, how laws, people equate uh -huh, law yeah. and, and, and policy with sausage making. But I, I found some very committed people there, mm -hmm. particularly in the Salucci mm -hmm. administration, uh, really good people who cared about what the right thing was to do. I, I remember in senior staff meeting every, uh, on those mornings once a week we'd all get together and the question would be we would all come armed with our information, all the options about any given issue and Paul would start off these conversations by saying you know what's the right thing to do? Mm. Wow. What do you think the mm -hmm. right thing to do is? Well let's get the options out there and he would pick the right thing to do and, and as I think history has shown he hasn't picked the easy roads uh, all the time mm -hmm. and he would he was willing to take the abuse of the press or the abuse of other people who were in the, the same field in, mm -hmm. in public service mm -hmm. to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so he was a guy, he would be a salmon at times and go upstream mm -hmm. and do things. Uh, wow. Sounds uh, like we need a yeah. book on that. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's, he actually has a great memoir too. <laughs> oh, so, okay. uh, uh -huh. uh, uh, he wrote a few years ago. But, uh, um, a salmon upstream, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. Title <laughs> it's a good title. That's good. Yeah, maybe a good song title too. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah but it was, it was really good. I learned a lot from just being around him yeah. and, and uh, mm -hmm. his chief of staff, Steve O'Neill, was a, a friend as well. And these are uh, very bright people who, mm -hmm. who uh, could go off and make uh, millions doing anything else they wanted, but they chose public service. Mm -hmm. I think it was kind of wow. neat. Yeah. And uh, you moved on from then as well, right? I Politics did. Politics and then another. I turn. did, yeah. I did some time as an, as, a, as an administrator with the with, in the state government, and and uh, I I realized that I really needed to get back into uh, something that was just more me, uh, mm -hmm. and that I had to get back into the arts to some degree. So I wound up coaching after I left mm -hmm. uh, state uh -huh. employment, and uh, wound up coaching uh, at uh, I was at Holy Cross coaching acting and mm -hmm. and uh, vocal performance. Uh, and speech coaching. Mm -hmm. So I started a little business called stage wow. coach consulting. Uh -huh. you know, it was just a whole country and western thing. It was started to bleed into my uh, my mindset, uh, but it was really just to uh, to have the freedom to uh, to work and I'd work out of my house at times, or go to clients' offices and in, in their homes sometimes to just mm -hmm. help them buff up their speeches mm -hmm. and and help aspiring actors and people who are auditioning for graduate school to work on their material mm. and prep them. I had a pretty good success rate with that, helping mm -hmm. people to get into the the, the better schools. Uh, you know, the people who wanted to be professional actors would get into the professional training programs. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it's constantly professional development, and, and I definitely, as a, as a family man, you, you want that steady paycheck too. Mm -hmm, so it's right. it's a real balancing act when you have your own business. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I use that as a uh, sort of another leaping off point, and I looked at my uh, my Rolodex, uh, the the Rolodex that I've had since you know being an actor in New York mm -hmm. and working in state government, and. Uh, I realized, gee, I, I guess I know a lot of people. I know a lot of people who do a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. what, do I, what do I do with that? Mm -hmm. um, and I had a great friend at Boston College who had, has recommended that I just think about fundraising. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, I, I never want to mm -hmm. ask people for money. You know? mm -hmm. He's like, no, that's not how it works. Why don't you just try it? So I wanted up doing a contract at BC, my alma mater at Boston College. And uh, I worked for their advancement office for about six months and I realized, gee, you know, this is, this is much different than I, I, I thought it was. It's about relationship building and educating and facilitating, not selling people on, on mm -hmm. a product or a mission, but educating people about how they can find common ground and things mm -hmm. that they want to accomplish with an institution. Mm -hmm. So I just thought it was, it's been a lot of fun. I've, I've done it since 2004 and, and uh, I worked at the MFA on their, uh, MFA Boston, wow. on their uh, capital that. campaign, we raised uh, over a half a billion dollars for wow. a, a new wing and for operating nice. support. And, did a couple of years after that at the Gardner Museum as their senior development officer, and, and now I'm at the uh, Worcester Art Museum, 
mm -hmm. and as the director of development. So I'm in the arts. You and, are. Yeah, yes, and, and I guess uh, so. uh, exciting things happening at the Worcester Art Museum now. We're just to learn that we're going to be receiving an incredible gift from the Higgins Armory, uh -huh. which has announced the Higgins Armory Museum has just announced that they're closing, uh -huh. sadly. Um, mm -hmm. But we're very fortunate to be in a position to receive their core collection. Wow. into our own collection. So we will wow. integrate that into our own, reinterpret it and show that in, in mm -hmm. really exciting new ways over the coming mm -hmm. uh, months. We'll, we'll actually have a year from now be opening a, a show of arms and armor. Mm -hmm. uh, much different in the way it might have been shown at the Higgins, but, but it'll be, uh, it'll, a lot will be the same about it. It'll be mm -hmm. some of the familiar materials that you'll get to see there. So um, you're part of that. Yeah, uh, part of that, part of the planning of that. And, and yeah. the big thing is fundraising mm -hmm. for it as well. So mm -hmm. we're, you know, yeah. we're out there pounding the pavement and Making for some funders. good plans. Right? Making some good plans and having great conversations. A lot of great family foundations in Worcester who have been the heroes mm -hmm. of that of that community wow. for a long time. Uh -huh. And they're uh, they're very committed to making things work that are going to work for Worcester. So mm -hmm. I think the, the WAM, as we call it, Worcester Art Museum, mm -hmm. is going to be an exciting place to to come and visit. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Wow. My goodness. Uh, yeah, what a path. And I know you did some travel in there at some point too. I did, Paul yeah. Paul Farmer I, and yeah, well, I did. I, you know, I worked with Paul, uh, Paul Farmer and, uh -huh. and Partners in Health. Actually, right before I started at, at the Worcester Art Museum, I did oh, a couple okay. years at mm -hmm. Partners in Health, uh, mm -hmm. PIH it's known as. And it's a global health and social justice mm -hmm. organization founded by Paul Farmer and Ophelia mm -hmm. Dahl. Um, and they're just incredible people with a mission that is just so compelling. I, I had the opportunity to travel with Paul and Ophelia to Rwanda, and I spent wow. a lot of time in Haiti, uh, um, and bringing donors and supporters over to these third world countries to, mm -hmm. to see the impact of, of their gifts mm -hmm. on, on these mm -hmm. communities. And, and uh, the, the model that works for Paul and Ophelia with Partners in Health is that we, we, you empower the community you teach them and you give them the resources mm -hmm. to, to heal their own communities mm -hmm. and to, through the community uh, health worker model, the mm -hmm. people in the community who are respected and trusted uh, to uh, bring the pills and medicines and services, medical services mm -hmm. into their own villages and puts, puts uh, a lot of women to work in mm -hmm. their own communities. Uh, so there's an economic piece to it there, that an economic benefit. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and it's just it's something that's proven over time over the last 25 years mm -hmm. to be a really great model. And a lot of other organizations, NGOs in Haiti and mm -hmm. Rwanda and Lesotho and other countries mm -hmm. to to really they put a lot of stock in this approach. Wow. So and it's you been got fun. to see that in action. In I your did, work. yeah, I did, and and uh, I made a lot of friends in Rwanda and, yeah, and I in heard Haiti. You were on the plane with some celebrities uh, around to in film. I, I did, yeah, I was. Mm -hmm. It was a really real fun opportunity to you know Ben Stiller is a, a great supporter mm -hmm. of of uh, our, our programs, our particularly in, in Haiti. Yeah, very uh -huh. funny guy, yeah. <laughs> but very serious about, about working with PIH. And wow. he's been very supportive mm -hmm. in a lot of ways and, mm -hmm. and, and putting us out there on, you know, tweeting about partners in health mm -hmm. um, and really has uh, been committed to building schools there as well and helping mm -hmm. to build. Uh, he and David Zwerner, who is a gallerist, a gallery owner in New York, he and his wife Monica have uh, uh, done a great job in helping to build Mirabalay Hospital. Hmm. In, wow. in, in Haiti. Uh, it's at a critical crossroads in the, in, in, in the country where people can get to it from all points. Hmm. And uh, they just opened and started seeing patients uh, wow. recently. So, uh, so much you yeah. have seen uh, by following your heart, your childhood passion, you know, starting there with uh, loving Elvis and wanting to go in theater, even yeah, though you yeah. got a bit, you know, badgered, for it, yeah, even though of, you yeah. took the path and went into, you know, thinking about science or law. And, yeah, yeah. and you went back to that and it brought you to this really interesting path and, and to here in Hopkinton to honoring family and and uh, the momentum of your work, and you keep your, your love of art still with you uh, since the age of 12, and I wonder yeah. if you could sing us out with a song. I would be glad to. And this is one of your own. This is one of my own. This one, it's one of my more recent ones. It's, uh, I think I'll do it. It's actually a country song, oh, which is wow. kind of strange uh -huh. for a, an Irish Catholic boy from Boston, <laughs> from, from Hyde Park, uh -huh. to, uh, <laughs> to be doing it. My, my brothers all kind of scratch their heads about, where, where, where the cowboy boots come from, Jerry? You know, where, where the southern accent <laughs> come, come from when you're singing? But um, I find it's uh, something that the, the values of country music are something that I easily espouse mm -hmm. to. And, and uh, so they, they, I'm very familiar with uh, you know, home and family and, mm -hmm. and uh, the love of your kids, the love of your wife. And mm -hmm. um, I wanted to come up with a song that, uh, that uh, addressed that, let's mm -hmm. say. And, uh, and this one's called, Waiting for a Better Day. Mm -hmm. I hope you like it. There's a kid. 
castle on a hill Just beyond the Irish Sea Honeymoon we never had Just waiting there for you and me Cause we're waiting for a better day Waiting for the kids to grow Working seven days a week To pay all the bills we owe We're waiting for a better time We're waiting for a clearer view Hoping one day there'll be time To think about me and you I don't want to spend the best years of our lives Waiting for a better day Lord knows I love this life We work so hard to make it real The kids, the house, the dog, the strife Every kiss that we can steal Cause we've been waiting for a better day Waiting for the kids to grow Working seven days a week To pay all the bills we owe We're waiting for a better time We're waiting for a clearer view Hoping one day there'll be time To think about me and you I don't want to spend the best years of our lives Waiting for a better day I know we're saving money When all we need is time So let's just try that little hotel Across the county line Cause we've been waiting for a better day Waiting for the kids to grow Working seven days a week To pay all the bills we owe We're waiting for a better time Waiting for a clearer view Thinking one day there'll be time To think about me and you I don't want to spend the best years of our lives We don't want to spend the best years of our lives Waiting for a better day